No, I don't know. Uh, he's, what? He's just, uh, Cody's just, uh, what? Okay. Sort of a dilemma here. Bit of a peckle. <laughs> yeah. Do I tell Belinda everything, or do I make a run for it? I'm serious. Give me some help here. I always imagined a day like this. One where she stumbles up across a cell phone record or a scribbled note on a napkin and asks me about it. I've always believed that I would do the righteous thing and tell her the truth. But the truth is just so damn elusive, isn't it? I mean, unknowable in the end. This half-remembered version of one side of things. Not like a lie exactly, but close. And what would the point be? I'll tell you this much. We end up pretty happy, however this time thing works out. Yeah, we get married not too much longer later. We even have a couple of kids of our own, two boys, I'm happy to report. And we live happily ever after, or the equivalent, whatever that means today. Oh, sure, we disagree on occasion. I have to sleep in the guest room from time to time. One of the boys breaks an eardrum when swimming, that sort of thing. But all in all, we survive. We make it as a couple, and that, my friends, is not easy. It is work. But I love it. I do. I love her. Always have. And I can see it on her face at night when we're out on the back patio at the blue hour. When the sun has just dropped down, and she is finally at peace. So what am I going to tell her now to ruin all that, huh? Nothing, that's what. I'm going to make up some tale about a baseball card I promised from my collection and go with that. Stick with that until my dying breath. Quick story, the Jackie Robinson story. Cody gave me that card. He gave me that card to go out with Belinda that one time to the movies, that time I, I mentioned way earlier. Yeah, you see, Cody was cheating on her even back then. He'd met some other girl, this cheerleader from over at Central, and he wanted to go out with her that same night. <laughs> so he calls me up, comes over, tells me this tale about uh, how he and Belinda are dating other people and shit like that. And would I like to help out? He tells me to go over to her house and pick her up, 6.30, and head over to that showboat place. He calls her, tells her the same thing, that I'm going to pick her up, he's going to join us there, friends will meet us. Same line of Cody Phipps bullshit. And that's how I ended up going to see a movie with Melinda. One that she doesn't even remember going to. But I did get the card out of the deal. Yeah, he was in a pinch, he was, Cody. So he agreed to it, screaming his head off, but he gave it to me. And this is the 1952 Topps card with the red inlay and a smear of crimson on the back like a baboon's ass. Oh, very scarce. But you see, Cody was always so desperate to get into some white girl's pants that he was willing to part with something that really mattered to him. That always made me hate him a bit. A little bit. Because he picked on me. Picked me to help him out because I was no threat. Fat and friendly and always up for whatever. Yeah, the perpetual bachelor number two. I, I can see what he was doing. I was, I, I mean, I totally got it. But I liked her so much, Belinda, that I was willing to. Oh, anyway. That's the kind of guy Cody was. You see, Cody Phipps was born a nigger. Still is to this day. And I know the difference, believe me, between what regular black people are and what Cody is. Absolutely. I never liked the guy. Yes, in school I'd hang out with him, do stuff, but that was basically just so he wouldn't make fun of me or knock me around. Because you see, Cody was a nigger even back then. This lazy, mean-spirited coon who always walked around acting like everybody owed him something. All that post-Civil War Malcolm X heavy-lidded bullshit that guys like him have been trained on for years. 
40 acres and a mule, and always ready to lay down the ace of spades. Well, hey, man, forgive us for dragging your sorry asses over here, because it wasn't fucking worth it! Thank you. 